We begin today with the big news from the United States, where President Joe Biden approved more than a $60 billion military aid package to help Ukraine's fight against Russia. After months of delay, a sweeping majority of the Senate passed the bill yesterday in a 79 to 18 vote. In the next few hours, literally the few hours, we're going to begin sending in equipment to uh, Ukraine for air defense munitions, for artillery, for rocket systems and armored vehicles. For months now, Ukraine has been suffering from artillery shell shortages while Russian forces were able to advance their attack. Yulia Kovalev is Ukraine's ambassador to Canada, and she joins me now. Ambassador, it's good to have you back. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this has been stalled for months. I know you've been anxious about this. What's your reaction now that it's finally passed and the president is sending aid to your country? Of course, like it's a very important step from United States, our core ally and supporter, and uh, the speed of the announcement just a few hours after the bill was signed. Um, uh, U.S. government announced $1 billion worth of the new uh, military support package, which also includes the missiles for air defense, uh, the uh, artillery, the armored vehicles, those which are of a huge need, as uh, now Ukraine for months has been feeling a shortage of munition. Uh, unfortunately, our troops uh, were withdrawn from Avdiivka. Uh, because actually uh, we were uh, filling this short of uh, munition and of course it's it's first it's very important support on the front line for the soldiers it's also like increasing the morale of the people in the country who are suffering every day from russian missiles almost every day there are the launch of the drones missiles 80 percent of our thermal power plant as we discussed lately have been destroyed so we really value and grateful for the support, bipartisan support in U.S. and the support of Amer people of America uh, for, uh, for this huge uh, uh, supplementary bill that was just uh, voted. So $60 billion today, uh, and, and the president said that w with, when he signed it, that within hours the aid would start yeah. to flow. And you say a billion dollars in, in, in artillery and ammunition is already on the way. So how significant is this aid package at this point in the war? I mean, as you said, you, your country had to pull out of Avdivka because they just couldn't spare the munitions uh, to fight back. Your, your, your electric infrastructure is being overwhelmed because of a lack of air defense. Where does this put you now? Of course, it's important. It's together it's also like uh, just yesterday, uh, UK announced the biggest in the history, the support, the package of uh, from UK worth of 500 million pounds. Mm -hmm. That also includes the missiles, uh, the artillery shells. We need to understand what Russia is trying to do. They are trying to push and use this momentum as the uh, military support is still on the way to get some gains on the front line. So, of course, the quick delivery of the support uh, and part of that uh, from the U.S. package is already in Europe. So we will be talking about the days uh, to, to, de to deliver uh, that to Ukraine. That's, that's very crucial for us. It's obviously a, a crucial uh, a, a jolt of assistance at, at a difficult time in the conflict. But some Ukrainian officials, I believe even Foreign Minister Kaleba, was saying that the, the restoration of the military it won't be enough to defeat Russia. I mean, what more does your country need at, at, at this point to, to push back against the gains they've made? Of course, like uh, the first thing that we has been talking for already a few weeks, is the air defense system. Mm -hmm. That's to protect the cities for civilian population. And we have the good news. Germany uh, already announced that they are sending uh, the, the one Patriot system to Ukraine. We are working among the allies to get more. Um, but also, if we are talking about the front line, if you ask the soldier or the, uh, ask the people who are now in the process of training to go to the front line, of course, like for them, it's scary to be mm -hmm. almost naked if they don't have the weapons to fight. So this is the, uh, these packages of support, and we see how quick was the reaction from U.S., just a few hours, and the, the package was announced, and the things are now moving to Ukraine. That's, I think, a good example among the, all of the allies to follow. You know, Ihor Michael Chishin from the Ukrainian Canadian Congress was here last night, and he spoke about the challenges your soldiers are having because Russia has riddled your country with landmines. And, and this is an enormous challenge for them, you know, for infantry and, and to, to move on. And he says what you need is, is air power. You need the airplanes uh, to, to get up and running to be able to push back and, and have that level of control. I mean, is that what your country needs most at this point? 
of course, like we, what what is in this war for uh, over two years is that Ukraine uh, don't have the superiority in the air uh, because of the lack of the fighter jets. Mm -hmm. uh, today, our fighter, uh, pilots are being trained, and we have, and we are grateful for the countries who have already committed to provide Ukraine uh, with F-16 fighter jets. Of course, that will be a significant support of our uh, troops on the ground being covered from the air with the modern fighter jets. They are still not in Ukraine. Um, the, the training is ongoing, the, the preparation are there, but we hope that this year they will be mm -hmm. in Ukrainian sky protecting our soldiers and helping them to advance and regain the territories. Regarding the mines, indeed Ukraine today is the most polluted by mines country in the world. So mo that both is linked to our agri fields Mm -hmm. which are contaminated uh, with the mines. And also it, uh, it put uh, the challenge to the soldiers to move further because Russia significantly mined those. And we also understand that Canada has few of those armored vehicles that can be used for the mining. And that is one of the things we are talking and asking from Canada to help us with that. Okay, so, so Canada has some, some demining vehicles they could maybe provide to Ukraine. I, I know uh, there has been a promise that has been unfulfilled to buy a, a NASAM, an uh, advanced air defense system for Ukraine, and because of just procurement and construction challenges, that hasn't arrived. There has been a request made for Canada to purchase missiles, air defense system, anything they can, even hand over surplus armored vehicles that could be not fully operational because your people will, will make them work. Watch your sense of, of getting a, a jolt of military support from Canada, whether it's buying ammunition, buying missiles, providing old armored vehicles, or giving you these demining vehicles. David, I would say that I will be the most happiest person if I will come to you, visit your show, and uh, share the great news that either the missiles or ammunition or these armed vehicles will be delivered to Ukraine. Let's hope it will be soon. Are there any indications that, that our government is, is thinking about doing that here we, in Canada? We actually have uh, quite often the meetings with D&D and the other agencies involved. Uh, they are fully aware about our urgent need. They are fully aware about the pressing situation on the front line. And we do hope and believe that overwhelming Canadians understand that Ukraine is fighting for all of us, is fighting against Russia, who is now the biggest threat to NATO who is actually Canada's neighbor in the mm -hmm. Arctic. So, you know, the, the, this is not only our, our fight for, for our country, that is a uh, fight for all of us as the Western de uh, democracies. And we hope that the decisions will be, and the implementation of the decisions will be done quick. Canada obviously can't match the military support a country like the United States or even the United Kingdom can provide, just given the nature of our military. But they have tried to lead the way on sanctions. This is something that the, the government has prided itself on. And we see a report from Reuters today, Ambassador, that Airbus has been granted a waiver to allow it to use Russian titanium by the Canadian government in its manufacturing and, and shipping of, of its European-made jets into this country, that Canada has given Reuters this waiver to use Russian titanium. What are your thoughts on that report? It's very disturbing. Uh, we re reached to Global Affairs of Canada to get some information about it. And you need to understand what it is, what we are talking about. We are talking about a company which is called Avisma, which is the one of the core of Russian military industry. So, Calibre missiles, MiG-35 and Su-35 fighter jets. Everything is built from the titanium, which is supplied by Avisma. Um, I will show you the picture. This is the, the picture from Vinnytsia two years ago. The seven-year-old kid was killed by this Calibre missile. Many more kids were killed by this missile strikes over the two years. They have been built by using Avisma titanium. For these two years of the war, the export from Russia of the critical minerals, including titanium, overreached 13 billion of US dollars. It's more than Canadian support to Ukraine for these two years, including the loans um, that Canadian government provided to us. And this is the core of Russian war machine. Uh, we heard back at the end of December 2022, uh, 
publicly from the CEO of Airbus that was uh, released in the media that it will take the company months, not in a year, to replace Russian titanium. We are already two years, over two years in a full-scale war. So is it not enough time? Shall we continue to pay Russian war machine billions of dollars and on the other side use the budget money to help Ukraine in the military? Um, I think this is not a rhetoric question. That is the reality. If we want Russia to stop and to stop Russian war machine, two years, it's totally enough. We already had this discussion two years ago, and there were a lot of calls from European companies that they cannot survive without the Siemens turbine. We are two years after that almost. It seems like we can. It seems like, and Europe has a tremendous, done a tremendous progress to deprive from dependency of Russian gas, including the first of all the pipeline gas. I think this was a very sober example that the things can be done. If there is a will and there is the real understanding that we cannot grant additional billions of dollars into Russian war machine. And that also, I think the, the company, it promised almost a year and a half ago that it will take them the months. And so where are they now? Is it like, is it okay for the company to understand that the, this titanium is killing the children in Ukraine, innocent children? Just, just as a, f a final question, did you get any explanation from the government of Canada? We don't really have. No so, we, we, so that's why I can't comment because I don't have enough information to comment whether it's true or not, but I'm just trying to explain what is that? What is at stake? This is the huge Russian military support, the conglomerate which Ukraine was advocating for months and years that they need to be sanctioned. We need to deprive from that dependency. There was a tremendous success in the energy and mm -hmm. critical minerals, and especially for Canada, the country who has a lot of critical minerals, including the critical minerals like titanium. This is the way how we need to act together. We can't let us to be compromised with our values. Ambassador Kovalev, thank you so much for your time today. We always appreciate it.